Um, I do want to start, though, by saying a really big thanks for inviting me here. I think this is just a fantastic initiative. Um, I'm a lawyer, but something that we've been doing very much in Europe lately has been trying to get lawyers together with everybody else involved in all aspects of procurement so that we can all, you know, pool our skills and, and come up with a really good system. But obviously, in, in drafting this instrument to encourage harmonization, what they were trying to do is draft an instrument about good procurement that states could use to get good procurement. And that's how most states look at it, really, not necessarily as an instrument for promoting trade, but simply as an instrument to put in what's a model of a good procurement system. And I say, however good your procurement law is, that is not going to be enough to, to stop corruption. It can support anti-corruption efforts, but it's only the, the tip of the iceberg, if you like. It's got to be supported by things like, for example, good training programs. And this is why an initiative like this, this um, institute and association is so welcome. Um, and then to spell out that content and to say they should be legally enforceable. It seems under the Trinidad approach, you've, made, you've still got an approach where you're going to have detailed legal rules. And you've still got an approach where they're going to be binding and enforceable. The only difference between the Trin proposed approach for Trinidad and UNSATRAL is the, the level at which the rules are set. It's being proposed they get set more, um, not in an act or even regulations, but in guidance and by individual entities' own policies.